Oh, my name is Mitzi Stauffer Gates. I am 88. I was born in 1934 in Delaware. And I didn't come to South Kingston until I was six years old. Well, my dad uh, had a job, got a job at the university, or actually it was Rhode Island State College at the time, as a math professor. So he had been a school teacher uh, in the high school before that time in Delaware. So it was exciting to move here at a, to a college town. It was very different than our little town in Delaware. Well, Kingston was such a wonderful little town. It was very quiet. Uh, we knew just about everybody by the time we uh, finished growing up. We would go up and down the streets and know every neighbor there was, uh, and they would stay there forever and ever. They never seemed to move. We lived on Briar Lane, which is right at the beginning of the university, right down the street with the, co the college gates. And we had a big old house, three stories, with the uh, 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 upstairs that was empty. We only used the, f the, f the uh, sec second and third, first and second. Oh my! <laughs> well, we lived right, uh, our backyards went right into the schoolyard. So we didn't have to very, go very far to grammar school. We could just walk around the corner and uh, attend school. The school was just a, uh, had only seven people in our class. And so we met uh, our, like the second and third grade would be together. And uh, it would make it at like 15 of us all together. So it was a very small class. We got a lot of attention and uh, we got to know the people, the, the friends that were a year older than us one year and then the next year we would be with people that were the year behind us. So it was a, a great little school. There was only four big rooms. We had uh, Miss, um, Mrs. Streeter was my first grade teacher and uh, uh, then we would go into uh, uh, Mrs. Laffey and she was a delightful lady. It was her first experience as a teacher um, we were kind of wild in the day. I mean, chewing gum was exciting. And uh, she only was with us for one year. And I think after she left, her, it was her first year of teaching. And uh, after she had us, uh, she became a nun. So I think that that probably tells you a little bit about uh, our class. Our whole life would be just the, the corner uh, going from uh, Briar Lane. We would walk down to North Road to the, to the uh, Main Street. And Main Street, we would be the library and the church and the post office. And that was our world. Uh, we never had a, a car, a second car. So we walked everywhere. My mom didn't drive until she was 50. So um, we would every day or every week go to the library, perhaps get three books for the week and then come home and read. We did a lot of reading. And um, the church, we would go to Sunday school and uh, the Kingston Congregational Church. Uh, the church house was right next door, which we had our brownies uh, would meet. We had a Mr. Knapp taught us rhythm I had a rhythm band. Uh, the library um, would have on the second store, they used the story, they would have dances from time to time and also they would have plays. So it was, that was our whole life. It was wartime. We moved in um, September of 1941. So just three months or four months later was, deed, uh, was um, uh, Pearl, Harbor. Pearl Harbor, and that changed life completely around Kingston. Uh, I believe a lot of the university students, of course, left, and all. And so, pretty soon, we would have instead of a lot of boys, there would be a lot of girls going to school to fill the spaces. One of the, I think, one of the most exciting things that we had, uh, and something that would be unique, would be. After the war, we had, as I told you, a big three-story house 
right next to the university. Uh, it would only take five minutes to get to class from the time you ran down and uh, got up and ran down to go to the early morning class. And um, after the war, there was a lot of GIs that um, didn't have, uh, uh, there were no dorms for them. So the, the university or the college at that time asked for the townspeople to open their doors for uh, students. So we rented to 10 students. Uh, I think we had 10 students, men, students, living in our house for the next uh, eight or nine years. So with the, we had four girls, and so with the 10 boys and mom and dad, that was quite a household. So it was, they were, these uh, men had been in the war. I don't know, some of them perhaps were just newly in the war and hadn't experienced much, but they were very, very content with living in very limited space. The only bathroom that they could use was a toilet, had a sink and a toilet. There was no shower, no tub, but that was all right. They didn't drink, they didn't smoke. They shaved, they were always clean shaven. They would go down to the university and, um, and have their meals at Lippitt Hall, and then th they would take their showers at the gym but they didn't complain, they studied, they were so anxious to be to school. And when you think of the students of today and all the luxuries they have, it's just incredible, the, uh, the contrast. Yeah. It, that was after the war, but during the war, my mom and dad were sitting out in, on the porch one day when a young couple came and uh, they saw this big house and they, uh, he was, it was an Indiana, a license on the car. He had, they had just been married. She had never been off the farm in Indiana. And he was at Quonset and they had no place to live. There were no, there were no, no uh, facilities for young married people. So we had them come in our house and they lived with us for two years on the third floor. So we had a, a, a marvelous time with uh, a full house. Well, I, I think uh, as I married then, I came over to Wakefield and uh, I lived on first on Oak Street with my, in my uh, mother-in-law's home. And I think that it was um, great to be able to finally be able to walk someplace and get an ice cream cone and uh, to get a cup of coffee in the morning. I loved going to uh, 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 Defonte's drugstore. Uh, by this time, I was had a baby carriage that I was strolling, and uh, a few years later, we um, we went to Connecticut and moved back and lived on Normandy Road. And by this time, I had uh, another child and then another child on the way. So I think my favorite time was being able to walk down street with the baby carriages and the little ones, and be able to shop in the stores and to know everybody. It seemed like uh, we, you know all the people that ran the store. You could just go into Kenyon's department store, buy what you wanted to. They didn't ask your name. They knew it. They didn't ask for a card or identification. They just wrote down a slip, and then you'd get the bill later on. So it was a very friendly town, a very town that um, was uh, very close, close knit. I think it would be nice if. Uh, we get back to the neighborhood uh, getting together. I don't know my neighbors now. Uh, some of them have been there for, for maybe 10 years and I wouldn't recognize them if I went down the street. And uh, it would be great to have uh, very small neighborhood parties. Wouldn't that be fun to somehow uh, get together? They, um, I think what they do down the street now in Wakefield is wonderful. I think it's a time for, especially for the young people to get together. Uh, and, uh, but I think if, to even make smaller little events that went on would be fun. Pleased that some of uh, my children, a couple of my, the boys are, are here in Wakefield and my grandchildren, I have a few grandchildren are living in Wakefield. And uh, suddenly when we moved in 1941, we were, uh, 
the strangers in town and uh, the new new people in town and uh, now it seems like we're some of the old folks and that that's amazing in my mind and it's good to be able to welcome new people in and to make them feel at home.